If you've been watching our Republic history series from the beginning, you know the Republic went through some rough times. The Republic dealt with the likes of genocidal cults, Sith Empires and Mandalorians and survived it every time. But the threat we'll be talking about in this video proved worse than anything the Republic had ever faced before. It wore the Republic down so badly that, for a full century, the whole galaxy stood on a knife's edge, terrifyingly close to total ruin. Today, we'll be talking about the new Sith Wars, a thousand years of darkness that the Republic barely survived. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Our story last left off with the old Sith dead and gone and the Republic beginning to rebuild. The true Sith Empire, its successor states and the armies of Darth Desilus had all been defeated and as far as the Jedi knew, the Sith were extinct at last. By 3500 BBY, the Republic entered the Inter-Sith Wars period, a time of renewal for galactic civilization. For 500 years, after the end of the war with Darth Desilus, the last of the old Sith Wars, the Republic had peace. That peace was briefly broken in 3017 BBY, with a sequel that nobody asked for. Remember the Al Sakan conflicts? We discussed them in our fourth entry in this series, if you need a quick recap. The first conflict began in 17,000 BBY, with many more following over the years. The last we discussed was the 10th Al Sakan conflict, which happened in about 10,000 BBY. 3,017 years before the Battle of Yavin, after a further six, the 17th Al Sakan conflict began nearly 14,000 years after the first. Once again, the Republic was split between worlds loyal to Coruscant, Al Sakan, and Corellia. This time, however, the Corellians got sick of everyone else's Sith and finally got involved in the fighting. Corellian frigates lashed out against both sides, crippling both the Republic's battleships and the Al Sakani missile cruisers. Corellia ultimately proved victorious, and Prince Admiral Jonash Isolo negotiated a peace treaty between Coruscant and Al Sakan at sword points on the Senate floor. The Al Sakan conflicts, at long last, were over. After the end of the 17th Al Sakan conflict, the Republic enjoyed a thousand years of peace. During this time, there was a massive boom in space exploration, the likes of which hadn't been seen for millennia. Vast swaths of the Rim were opened up and incorporated into the Republic, adding hundreds of new sectors. While that sounds like a good thing, and while it was initially considered a good thing, this new wave of expansion came with a dark side. You see, when the Republic was first formed, it was determined that each sector, and thus one seat in the Senate, would represent a maximum of 50 systems. This rule was later stretched as the Republic expanded, but nonetheless, the new wave of expansion meant that hundreds of new sectors joined the Republic in the span of just a thousand years. This was a logistical nightmare that rendered the Senate almost entirely ineffective, as it meant there were tens of thousands of senators at any given time. The Republic had become so massive that it was completely paralyzed. This didn't result in all that many problems on its own, as individual sectors were self-sufficient enough in peacetime, with the Jedi and Republic military around. But it would only take one good crisis to bring down this house of cards, and sure enough, the mother of all crises was just around the corner. At the end of the Inter-Sith Wars period, an Umbaran Jedi Master named Thanius left the Jedi Order and began traveling across the galaxy, seeking whatever remained of the Sith. Though the Sith were believed to be dead, that wasn't yet the case. Scattered cults had preserved Sith teachings in secret, and Thanius sought each of them out, learning as much as he could from them. In 2000 BBY, he returned to the galaxy at large and declared himself the Dark Lord of the Sith, taking the name Darth Ruin. At first, he was joined by a group of 50 fallen Jedi, but this number quickly swelled to the hundreds. A fourth Great Schism had begun. Darth Ruin and his followers, the new Sith, carried out a guerrilla campaign against the Jedi Order, a war that soon spread to involve the Republic itself. 
Moving quickly, the Republic mustered its navy and began another military buildup, while the Jedi tried to nip the threat of the new Sith in the bud. Despite their efforts, the new Sith swelled rapidly. Darth Ruin himself didn't last long. He was relentlessly egotistical, something that resulted in the deaths of many of his followers who eventually teamed up and murdered him. That didn't stop the new Sith though. For the next thousand years, which were later deemed the Dragulch period, the Republic was embroiled in the new Sith Wars. Like the old Sith, the new Sith set out to build an empire to rival the Republic, reclaiming old Sith worlds like Yavin 4 and Xyost. However, their empire, if it could even be called that, was nothing like those of past Sith Orders. The new Sith were extremely fractitious, divided between dozens of cults and orders led by self-proclaimed Dark Lords of the Sith. This hamstrung the new Sith, but it also made it harder for the Jedi or Republic to defeat them. Whenever one Sith army was crushed, two more sprung up elsewhere, steadily wearing down the Republic's strength. After the death of Darth Ruin, the next great Sith leader sprang up around 1750 BBY. Called the Dark Underlord, this shadowy spectre assembled a Sith alliance known as the Black Knights and launched a concerted assault on the Republic. He was ultimately defeated in the Battle of Malrev IV, in which Jedi Master Murtug forged an alliance with the Mandalorians and crushed the Dark Underlord. The Black Knights were scattered but the new Sith survived, and new Sith Lords rose to fill the power vacuum. The Mandalorians continued to help the Jedi and the Republic against the Sith for the rest of the conflict, though not even they were able to halt the Sith advance. By 1500 BBY, the Republic military had grown strong enough to slow the new Sith down, winning major battles at Gap 9, Corfelion, and King's Galquick. But in 1466 BBY, the new Sith emerged victorious from the decisive Battle of Mizra, which completely undid all of the Republic's earlier victories. In that battle, the Sith massacred their opponents, capturing hundreds of Jedi to turn to the dark side and killing hundreds more. The Battle of Mizra was so decisive that it effectively cost the Republic control of the Outer Rim. After the Battle of Mizra, the war turned against the Republic. Republic territory atrophied as new Dark Lords rose and fell. The Senate almost completely broke down, and for the first time in nearly 2,000 years, the Republic hemorrhaged territory, especially in the Outer Rim. Commerce and the Hollow Net all but fell apart. Trying to stem the bleeding, the Jedi all but took over the Republic. After 1,400 BBY, Every Supreme Chancellor for the next four centuries was a Jedi, and during this period, many pockets of space came under the rule of Jedi Lords. But the Jedi Order was too small to run the galaxy, and could only prolong the inevitable. From 1250 to 1230 BBY, under Dark Lord of the Sith Belia Dazu, the alchemically created Techno Beast Plague ravaged the galaxy during the Sictus Wars turning living beings into mechanized zombies. Around the same time, the deadly Kandorian plague swept across Republic space and killed billions. In response to these twin threats, more and more sectors closed their borders and left the Republic, worsening its decline. After the end of the Sictus Wars, the Sith continued to grow stronger, even as the Republic weakened. By 1100 BBY, the Sith had gotten so strong that they were able to launch an assault on the Core Worlds themselves, the very heart of the Republic. They came perilously close to taking Coruscant, but at the last moment, their advance was stopped as self-proclaimed Dark Lords turned on each other, vying for supremacy. With the Sith distracted by infighting, the Jedi quickly beat them back to the Rim, but the damage was already done. The Republic had shrunk to just a scattering of sectors, and for the next hundred years, it all but ceased to exist. That century of chaos became known as the Republic Dark Age. Fortunately for the Republic, the Sith were also in turmoil for most of the Dark Age. However, this ended in 1010 BBY when the fallen Jedi Skerik Khan gathered the warring Sith Lords and formed the Brotherhood of Darkness on the planet Rune, the final form of the new Sith. Under Khan, 
the Brotherhood of Darkness began another massive offensive against what was left of the Republic, claiming vast swaths of space in the Outer Rim and moving forward. Their victory seemed so certain that the Huts broke their long policy of neutrality and officially joined the new Sith, vastly increasing their territory and power. But even with the Republic on its knees, the Jedi still defended it. Over the course of the new Sith Wars, many Jedi had become lords, serving as the legitimate rulers of sectors left undefended. One of these Jedi Lords, who went by the name Hoth, raised an army and began a counteroffensive against the Brotherhood, backed by what was left of the Republic military. Starting in 1004 BBY, Hoth defeated the Brotherhood in system after system, easing the pressure on the Republic. The final stage of the new Sith Wars was called the War of Light and Darkness, for it was almost entirely a battle between the Sith and the Jedi, with the Republic too weak to make a difference. In 1002 BBY, Hoth's army became the basis for an army of light, a massive force of Jedi Knights and their allies intended to combat the Brotherhood of Darkness. The two armies clashed across countless worlds before digging in to fight over one last planet, Rusan, an unremarkable world in the Mid Rim. Over the course of 1000 BBY, the Jedi and Sith fought seven battles over Rusan each exhausting virtually all the strength they had left. Both sides fought hard, but thanks to the timely arrival of Jedi Lord Valentine Farfalla during the seventh battle of Rusan, the Army of Light ultimately triumphed. Lord Khan and the tattered remains of the Brotherhood retreated to the caves beneath the Valley of the Jedi, where, on the suggestion of Darth Bane, they created a Thought Bomb, a terrible force weapon that consumed the souls of all in the vicinity. In a last act of desperation, Khan and the Brotherhood detonated the Thought Bomb, killing themselves, Lord Hoth, and a hundred other Jedi. In doing so, they all but wiped out the Sith. Now under the command of Lord Fafala, the Army of Light emerged victorious from the Crucible of Rusan, though their losses were beyond the Count of Grief. In winning the Seventh Battle of Rusan, they also won the New Sith Wars. Beyond all hope, the threat of the new Sith had been extinguished at Rusan. The Republic, utterly beaten as it was, had essentially won by default. 1000 BBY was the end of the era of the Old Republic and the beginning of a new age for the galaxy. Over the course of the next few centuries, it would again rebuild and become greater than ever before. But its new golden age wouldn't last. A single Sith Lord had survived the Battle of Rusan, a Sith Lord named Darth Bane. As soon as the new Sith Wars ended, he set in motion his own campaign against the Republic, the Sith Grand Plan. But that's a story for another time, namely for next week, when we finish our series on Republic history.